everyone and welcome. I'm Diane and my passion is painting and creating in my studio. Every day I share a video with you on YouTube in which I paint and create all sorts of nature inspired pictures. I also share loads of tips on how to make the most of your painting journey, interrupted fairly frequently by our family of dogs, cats, chickens and sheep. So welcome on board, click subscribe and turn on notifications and let's learn to paint watercolour. Hi everyone and welcome to my studio. Today we're going to be making some moves towards autumn. I woke up this morning and it was um, misty and damp and quite chilly and it makes you realise that the seasons are turning and um, so it's time to think about all things septum septembrial and autumnal and, and so on and so forth. So a couple of things I want to prepare for and one of those is the painting of all the wonderful colours and the seeds and the grasses and the dried bits and pieces that we can enjoy doing in September, October. And secondly, um, in Inktober, which is the month of painting every day in ink for the entire whole month. So there are several things I wanted to share with you about that. And uh, first thing I want to talk about is uh, this, which is a glass pen. Um, these are widely available. This is a very simple one, it's got, but it's got a beautiful um, uh, drawn, I think that's draw, drawn glass, a uh, beautiful drawn glass uh, pointed bit there, the nib. Uh, the rest of it is very simple. Um, you can buy them on Amazon and I've put a couple of links in the description below um, in case you want, if, what a wonderful present that would make somebody, an artist who has everything. Um, because once you start to use this in conjunction with your water pen, couldn't be more different, could it? A water brush and a, and a glass um, pen. But uh, the two together are absolutely wonderful for doing all sorts of um, CD things and so on and so forth. So I wanted to introduce you to that in case you hadn't come across it. Like I say, they're not very expensive and they're really, really um, great to use. So first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you today a way of um, doing some seed heads and the first one I'm going to start with is Allium and um, uh, this is a cotton bud or a q-tip um, and uh, Allium yes everybody knows I expect that Allium is um, the onion family and um, so we're going to start off I've got a drop of sepia ink here this is Sennelier Sepia uh, India ink and um, I'm just going to check that you can see what I'm doing there. I'm using my husband's phone today because our, remember I mentioned last week that the iPhone was overheating? Well it's got to go back because it's broken I think and so I'm not using that today. What a nightmare. Anyway, so I'm dipping my uh, Q-tip or whatever into ink and then um, just go back a couple of pages and test that out okay that's fine so an easy way of doing an allium head this is such fun I mean who could resist that you want to go on forever isn't that great look at that various different pressures you can do them light very light like that as well so you might want to do a few like that, sideways on. And uh, so just make a rough sort of oval like that using your Q-tip. Oh. What did I call it before? Q-tip, 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 or cotton bud, cotton bud. That's what we call them in England. Okay, then I'll put that to one side and um, I'm going to uh, put some, a drop of ink in the middle here and just lay a blob in there in the middle of the allium just irregularly like that and then um, put that to one side as well and I'm going to take my um, pen and just do irregular lines from the center out try and keep them reasonably straight but it doesn't matter if they overlap and you can have plenty of them and you can dip into the ink as well if you want to make them a bit stronger coming back 
in a little bit, perhaps, like that. And so that gives you part of the structure. And then um, the next thing, the idea is to take a small flat brush, which I'm just looking for. I know I've got one here somewhere to make a kind of printed impression again. Um, yeah, this one will do, I think. This is a size half inch square wash, flat wash brush. And I'm going to just wet that very slightly and then dip it into the ink. And then I'm just going to do some very light, squiggly, not squiggly, uh, tiny really. Um, need a bit more ink, don't I? Sort of printed marks, like that, that's better. Sort of circular, like that. And then a few coming out. So you've got layers there, you see, you've got layers of different textures. And which is very interesting, much more interesting to do than just copying um, something that uh, you're going to make an absolute botanical uh, representation of. So now I'm picking up with my uh, glass pen just ink and then I'm just scribbling it in to make a nice stem there. And I might take my um, whoops, my water brush and then using just water, just soften around the outside edge there and maybe a little bit of water then into the ink coming down down there. Just soften that up a little bit. And you can, once you've got that brush clean, you can just sort of let that drift off out. So this could become part of the painting, you see. Then when that's dry, if you want to make the inside darker or you want to sharpen up any of these bits and you want to, you could drop in more dotty bits but you'd have to wait for that to dry first of all so we'll come back to that later and uh, so I'm just going to put my ink there so I can dip in and when you dip in you'll find that you can actually draw quite a lot of line before that runs out if you just go like that you can't pick up very much ink but when you do it like that you can it's all embedded in the length of the nib. So that's like that. So then we'll do the whole thing again. We'll just come in with some more Q-tip and oval like that. Started with the stem this time. And then I'm going to put, we'll try using the, there we are, we'll use the dipper, not the dipper, the, what do you call this? Dropper, that's it, and we'll drop in. And the thing is, you'll find as you do this, you'll develop your own way of doing it and you'll get more confident as you feel more confident with your materials. So you'll find, oh, you say to yourself, that's actually better than the first one I did. And then you can come in with your stipple brush if you want to, to make some more texture around the outside. You may or may not want to wet this one. And then, you know, into the distance, you might feel that you want to use this brush just to give you uh, the same kind of thing, but, but further away. And then you come in with your ink again. Always oh, coming from the center and then your stem coming down like that. And obviously this kind of a motif is very autumnal. You could use this, develop it for 
part of another bigger painting or you could use it to make something like a bookmark or anything like that. It's a very good motif. It says autumn all over it, doesn't it? Um, so let's turn this around the other way so I don't put my hand on it. Okay, so the second thing I'm going to um, show you how to do is a seed head. Of, let's say of a poppy and um, so let's let's do this with the pen we're because we're practicing with the pen so a poppy seed head has got sort of um, at the top it has a kind of gathering together there and then it comes down in a kind of bag and the beautiful thing, one of the things I like about pen and ink is that you don't really ever make any mistakes. You can just, um, you know, keep scribbling. I'm a great one for scribbling. So that's the top there. You can also obviously wet it to give yourself a nice wash effect leaving some of it light, like that. And then you're going to continue on down, and this is where this pen is, so I really am in love with this pen. What with this and my water brush? I don't know, I've been in paradise this year. I'm so grateful to all you guys out there in YouTube world for forcing me to do this, it's about time. get to the sort of age that I and we are and you think oh it's now or never it's now or never give it to me right um let's put some dots up here you could use a, a toothbrush for the seeds but it's not worth it because this is just a quick sketchy sort of thing and we'll put some on here too and you can always come in with some dots into the wet where the ink is wet and in the exact same way that you do with paint you can drop more ink in and it will darken it down so where you want the shadow to be you can add more. Sepia is great. I think it's very kind to the eye. And then you can go back into the stem and now you've put your little wash in there. You can um, emphasize the ridges of the poppy stalk. So there they are, that's one poppy stalk. And uh, you could also do it slightly differently and you could have the top part facing forward a little bit so you get this kind of effect you see and then again you've got your your bag or pouch or whatever you want to call it that your seeds are all inside of And the water brush and then you can if you want to do it a little bit more quickly just pull down with your water brush a stem like that and then just drop in some lines onto that line of water that you've made and that will give you a nice um, soft so it's a var variation right a variation and you can partly shadow that in too. And then you need your seeds. 
and as we know poppy seeds are very tiny. So coming back to that, just dropping in a little bit more ink, darken that down a little bit and uh, few more seeds, maybe one or two little lines down there like that. So there is what the allium looks like now and this is what the poppy seed head looks like now. And another thing that we can do with this brush that we had before, our flat, um, we can use that to, uh, if I pick up some ink on that, I can use that to make um, we need to just test it on a rough piece of paper first. I need it to be fairly dry. Yeah, if you've got too much ink on it, just dry it on a piece of um, toweling or something. And then you can make seed heads, grasses, you know. So if you just drop in um, very lightly using this brush, alternating seed heads like that. And then take your dip pen and just draw in a stalk like that and then where the little seed heads join, do it like that. You can do some more if you want to make them go down further. And you could do um, with your ink, uh, water brush, for example, just some nice dry stems like that of leaves. We can try that again. So, one at the top, and then just very lightly. Ink goes an awful long way, it can vary the way you do it, like that, and then just dip in a little bit of. sepia ink like that, which in the store, the start, the joining bits and pieces, you can add a few more dots up here. I'm thinking to myself you could use this to do lavender with as well if you wanted to. And then another thing, um, wider uh, leaves you could do like this, so just press down and lift up. And then as you go along you'll find that you'll run out of ink and as you twist it you get more interesting shapes. So like that and then come back with your glass pen and you can put in more details, you can put in the veins like that and a stalk in the middle. Which you can do with a sort of scratched out effect like that. And then you could, if you wanted to, you could turn this into a, an ear of corn. Not corn like America, but wheat. So just doing little seedy grains like that. Just keep going up till you get to a certain point. And then you might come in with some very light colour perhaps something sort of brownish yellow or just wet the ink either way depends what color ink you've used I suppose and then you can just do some little flicky out bits like that and when that's dry if you don't feel you've got enough uh, shade and light and shade on it you can just come in with some more ink and just drop in to accentuate like we did down here but you can see already we're starting to get quite a nice variety of different um, ideas and by the time now your brush is starting to get a little bit dry 
you can you know you can start to do dry brushwork like that which is another way of doing grasses just dryly brushing your brush across the paper this paper is just sketch paper so it doesn't have any uh, tooth so it gives that kind of grassy effect you see how that looks like grass it's rather good isn't it so those are various different kinds of seed heads and um, the other thing that I can show you that I did earlier which we could look at later I'm not going to do this in this video is trees these are done with ink and with this um, glass pen, which is great. They look quite autumnal, don't they? And the other thing, which I did this morning and I'll be showing you in a soon to come video is um, autumn leaves. We're going to be doing autumn leaves and pine cones and acorns and stuff like that. So this is just to show you, whoops, I keep doing that, don't I? What I'm practicing doing for your enjoyment in the near future. These kind of maple type of things. I'm going to put a lid on that before I knock it over. That would be fun. Um, yeah, so coming soon. Um, so there we are. Uh, totally recommend one of these. Um, totally recommend one of these. And I totally also recommend um, this is Sennelier uh, Transparent um, burnt sienna ink it's quite nice doesn't have any smell um, you can use it mixed with watercolor and there's no problem at all you can use it with a brush or with a pen with a water brush and so on and so forth I'll try and find a link for that or something similar and put that in the description below so there we are that's for today no actual proper picture but some really good elements for you to use um, in your painting. Oh, and here was the bees that I was doing yesterday in the painting, which um, I need to develop that. The honey bees, I wasn't very happy with them at all. What do you think of my um, hibiscus? I did this last night, I think it was, just playing around. Not sure whether to do hibiscus or I think the season has passed. What does everyone think? And uh, there we are. So that's today's allium heads. And um, I quite like that. So I'll see you soon. Back tomorrow with more fun from the farm. Bye everyone. Bye bye. <laughs>